Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile with yet another video for the weekend of November 30th, December 1st. I apologize that these are all stockpiling into one weekend, but just based on timing and the things I wanted to cover, they kind of all hit at the same time. So I promise to try and keep this one pretty quick, and this is my what sold video for the month of November. It was a fairly large month. I had 34 orders in the month of November. Two of them were something I covered in my last video because that one technically went into the first couple of days of November because it covered my first 30 days of business. I opened my Etsy store on October 6th. So this Wolf Creek wood carving and the Holt Howard Tall Ships mug uh, both fell in the month of November, but they technically were covered in the last video. So if you want to get more information on either one of those, uh, you are, you'll have to go to the other what sold video for my first 30 days in business. So this video is going to cover hopefully fairly quickly some of the highlights and some of the lessons learned and some important notes that uh, might be of benefit to those of you who might are watching this. The first item beyond the first two that I've already covered that were in the month of November was this set of melamine dishes. The, um, these were marked Allied Chemical, but they actually came in a larger box, which included some serving pieces, some mugs. The serving pieces were actually marked Melmac, but they did all seem to match. Uh, there were some other, the coffee mugs were in this color, and the saucers were in a more of a mustard color, which matched the serving pieces. So I had them all listed separately. And these actually came from a thrift store that I just wanted to comment on. It came from the Salvation Army in Wisconsin that uh, this was the very first time I visited them. And what I found interesting about it was my first stroll through the store, I found their prices, I felt they were fairly high. Not high in general, but they were a little bit too high for me as a reseller to try and pick up anything and make any money. But perfectly respectable if you were looking to pick up things for yourself. As I was wandering around and literally about to leave, I suddenly saw a little board over the near the cash register that talked about the colored ticket sales and showed that some of the tickets were between 50 and 75% off. So it turns out what their philosophy appears to be is that when new things come in, they still price them attractively. So if somebody wants it for their own resources or for their own needs, they are supporting the local community by giving things at a really nice, attractive price. But if they don't sell in the first three, four, or five weeks, I don't exactly know how long the turnaround time is, they suddenly jump up these discounts and give 50% or 75% off. So then resellers like myself can come in and get some really attractive pricing. So this was a big set of dishes. So all of these, these plates, the bowls, the bread plates, uh, eight cups and saucers, some serving pieces. I think the entire set was originally marked for 20 bucks or a, an attractive price, but not something I was looking to invest in. But then it was 75% off. So I was able to pick this up. I divvied them up to try and make it a little bit easier to sell because I didn't think the cups and saucers were going to really be my big movers. This happened to go to a woman who shared with me that she really just wanted these plates. She was building this collection. She was not interested in combining the other pieces uh, to save money on shipping. But I basically recouped my entire expense and, and then some on the sale of these dishes uh, which I sold for $25, which did include shipping. And the shipping was a little pricey because this set ended up weighing, I want to say something like five pounds. So it, it did have a decent cost to ship it, but I still recouped what minimal investment I had and everything else I sell from this set will now be pure gravy. Uh, the next piece, this is one of the favorite pieces I picked up, it's this little Francoma squirrel. And it's a Francoma is a name that I recognize, but I'd never seen this little piece before. And it was in a Goodwill and it happened to be sitting in amongst all the mugs for some reason. So in looking at it, you saw these all these low mugs kind of all about the same heights. And then suddenly this six inch tall squirrel tail popped up. I didn't know it was a squirrel tail at the time, but I saw something thin popping up. I picked it up and just absolutely loved the look of this. I think it's got a really nice arts and crafts, you know, nature, um, uh, lines to it. I really wouldn't put it into Nouveau, although that really is kind of a, a sexy swirl to the tail. It's just a really attractive piece. And so I picked it up because it was three bucks, picked it up, no issues. When I did some research, I suddenly discovered that this thing sells all the time for between 25 and 30 bucks. There was, I think, over 10 or 12 listings that all had sold in 2019, all in that price point. So I felt very safe to uh, list him 
at 36 bucks that included free shipping he really didn't weigh much at all so the shipping didn't cost all that much and so i ended up netting in that same 25 to 30 price point and he sold fairly quickly so that's something to keep your eyes out for if you are uh, looking for a nice little investment if you ever see that little little squirrel the hobnail salt and pepper shakers this was the first time i'm not even sure they're hobnail or maven candlewick i think i put that in the description the this is the first salt and pepper shaker i actually ever sold so i had all kinds of them and they just really really weren't moving this one cost me three bucks so i was a little bit concerned that i might have overspent for them but i was able to sell them for nine this was one of the cases that i had listed it for nine plus shipping because I knew there really wasn't going to be a lot of room in these that if I had to ship them to California or someplace on the West Coast, they ended up weighing over a pound once they went into the packaging. So I was concerned about how much they were going to cost to ship. So I did the Etsy option to do the $35 worth of purchases. Then you get free shipping. This individual just bought the $9 for the salt and peppers and didn't add anything else on. That's fine. It protected me on the shipping. I picked up the nine bucks, so tripled my investment, perfectly content with that. And a little bit of a lesson learned playing around with this idea of does everything need to be free shipping or you know, maybe some of these lower priced items might be the price plus shipping. And the, the jury's still out, I haven't decided, but that was the first one that I sold doing it that way. Uh, this Australian themed coaster set was kind of fun. It was a set of Weiss, Weiss, Weiss uh, coasters. I actually don't know what Weiss is, uh, but these coasters had the name imprinted on every coaster. Picked these up at a Goodwill. Uh, actually, I think it might have been a private thrift store. Uh, I believe it was in Wisconsin. It was 99 cents for the full set. They were in beautiful condition and just had these really cool illustrated drawings of different animals from Australia. And then it had the name of the, the animal and just a really nice imagery. This really is an example that I share because it's a, because Etsy is a little bit different as I understand than uh, eBay, you have to choose your 13 keywords wisely. This was a case that I actually used each of these animals individually as a keyword and that is how they sold because the woman who bought them shared with me the platypus is her favorite animal. She just bought a new house. She was buying herself a housewarming gift and she did a search for platypus and this is what she found. She may not have found these with some of the just traditional Australia or certainly with Vice because that's not what she was buying them for. She was buying for the image of the platypus, which is kind of cool. So just a good lesson that obviously keywords are important anyway, but some cases you need to go into that level of detail and although the other five animals didn't get me any bites from her it only takes one and uh, picking up the platypus uh, helped uh, my next purchase was something i was really excited by when i found it i probably undersold it based on some of the comps that i had found but i wasn't convinced this was early on and i wasn't i wasn't convinced i was selling the same thing so this falls into the category of sometimes you you don't know what you don't know and it's really hard to figure it out. This is a beautiful polyac lacquer egg, porcelain egg. The problem is, for most people, unless you read the Cyrillic alphabet, you would have no idea that this says polyac. So it's pe el, el, ye, ech. Yeah, okay, okay, I've, I haven't done Russian in a very long time, but I can still read the Cyrillic alphabet. I also know that polyac lacquer boxes are one of the more valuable boxes out there because of the painting uh, in this region is some of the more desirable. So I knew that that said polyac, so I definitely wanted it. It also names the egg, but again, this is another case that you need to be able to read Cyrillic, but that says Ruslan E, which is and Ludmilla. So I did a search for Ruslan and Ludmilla and put that into the uh, Etsy description as well and found uh, several comps and some of them were very, very highly priced, you know, in the $100 range. But some of them were also very low. And so I was not convinced if these, if there were knockoffs, if there were different versions of quality, if there, I just wasn't con uh, confident what exactly I had. So when I listed it, I only listed it for 20 bucks. I only had 99 cents into it. So again, it was perfectly acceptable margin for me. 
it sold not instantaneously, but it did sell within a couple of weeks to the point that maybe I should have sold it for a little bit more. Who knows, maybe I sold it to a reseller who currently has it in their inventory and they're gonna get the $100, $150. Knock yourself out. I made my money quickly and was able to buy other things at that time. But it's an example of when you do, trying to do research can be harder than you might think as you're trying to do all kinds of decorative objects that you really don't know where they're coming from. Uh, the next set was a set of, uh, I call them Royal Copenhagen Angels. And I just include these in my discussion because the angels were just in a little baggy uh, for 50 cents at a thrift store. It might have been a, it wasn't a Savers, but it was, it, they were all grouped together and I, they weren't padded or anything. I was really concerned they'd be uh, chipped, but they were in perfect condition. They don't say Royal Copenhagen anywhere, but they have this little wavy lines, which I recognized. So I did some searching, tried to find some comps, tried to find these images, could not find them. So when I wrote them up, I said, it has the three waves of the Royal Copenhagen Company, but they do not say Royal Copenhagen. So I honestly don't know if they are. So I did not want to be accused of listing something for not what it is. So I was totally honest. And I tend to do that in all of my listings. I outright state, I do not know. And if that makes someone feel mentally superior to me, couldn't care less. As long as you give me your money, make me feel like an idiot. I don't care. But I don't ever want to inadvertently mislead. I would never purposely mislead somebody, but I don't want to inadvertently mislead somebody if I'm not clear. So I don't tend to buy or resell a lot of things that have no marks because I am not at the level yet as some others who have been doing this for years that can look at something and say, oh, of course that's Royal Hoquenhagen, or of course that's Inesco, or of course that's Lefton. I can get an idea, but I don't know. So I always need something to go off of. And I'm sure I've left some great treasures in different places because if I don't see any mark whatsoever, I'm not even willing to risk a, a dollar or two because I wouldn't know how to how to list the, the keyword searches within Etsy. So this is something that I just share that because that's just the way I work. That may be right, maybe wrong. Maybe even saying this is overstatements, you know, but I, I try and be very upfront about it and uh, I was able to sell them and this was another example that I only sold them for nine bucks and with plus shipping so this was a case that the individual also only purchased these they did not go on and find the other items to get to 35 bucks they just paid the few dollars because they didn't weigh much so it was first class I probably should have just done it as all in but I was still learning so those are for nine bucks the M.A. Hadley side plates are kind of an interesting little story because I actually picked those up through a Facebook uh, a Facebook group that I am on that I sell in and I wanted to be supportive of the other resellers and I purchased these plates for $2 a piece. What I had not really taken into consideration was how heavy they were. So when we did the shipping, I, all in, I was about $16, a little more than $16 into the investment of these. They are worth more than $16, but not by much. And so I was a little bit worried about what I could resell them for. And I did resell them. I listed them for $29, but that included my cost to ship them back out. I was able to ship them a little bit cheaper than what I was charged because I do use Pirate Ship, uh, a service that I highly recommend for resellers out there. And so I was able to do a little bit cheaper. And I also didn't have to ship them very far, if I remember correctly. So I did make a decent amount of money, but I, did, I didn't even double my money, not even close. So probably not even covering my time, but it was a lesson learned that, you know, there are gonna be some cases where I wanted to do a good thing by supporting the group and showing that I was active, not just trying to sell to them, but I need to do that with lighter weight items. <laughs> That's my lesson learned. Uh, the Katani teacup and saucer, Nice little purchase. I think I paid either a dollar or two dollars. It was definitely a goodwill. I just can't remember if I paid it for half price. The it resold for twenty two bucks. It was very clearly marked Kutani. You know, this again falls into that category. I don't know these things at sight, and but this was a term that I had heard bandied about uh, by Jocelyn, a crazy lamp lady, about uh, a good name to be able to sell. Not so much the Mayo China, but specifically Kutani. So I knew what it was. I was able to include that in my description of my keyword searches. It was an absolutely pristine condition and it sold relatively quickly uh, for 22 bucks, which did include shipping, but it weighed almost nothing. So the shipping was nice and cheap. 
The false graph uh, winter frost mugs, uh, this was a twofold story that's somewhat interesting. The first, as you can see, this image that I included only has five mugs because when I purchased them, they only had five. I was in another store and I actually found a sixth one. So I ended up changing the listing and selling them as a set of six, but I did not have the time to go out and redig out these five that were sitting in storage waiting to sell. So I never actually got a picture with all six of them in there. So I thought that was kind of funny. But I sold them, shipped them, and two of them shattered in transit. Luckily, they were shipped for priority mail. I instantaneously gave her a refund that was higher than the amount of just two-sixths or one-third of the shipment. And I also gave her a coupon for another purchase on my shop, which so far she has not done or not utilized. But I always want to be thriving for 100% or five-star ratings. So I felt horrible that those broke on her. Uh, I, you know, there's a lot of stories right now of p new people, trainees working at the post office that are not handling packages. But even if they were experts, it needs to be packaged well enough. And I didn't do that. So lesson learned, it was a fairly hefty package and uh, two of them broke. So I'm probably overkilling some stuff when I ship it now, but hopefully I don't get anything more broken uh, beyond that. We had a nice little uh, lollipops figurine I can't, uh, that one was, uh, yeah, it was a Hallmark figurine. And a lot of people say that there's not a lot of value in Hallmark. Um, I don't know. I had 50 cents into the figurine and she sold for 19 bucks, including shipping, and she went first class mail. So I made some decent money there. So you're not going to get rich off of them, but it's a cute image, image with a little girl with a dog. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what the purpose was, who bought it, why they bought it, but regardless, I was pretty happy with it and uh, had a nice nice turnaround on a Hallmark item. The Shmoo is from, uh, is it Andy Cap or Al Cap, the old cartoon? This is actually a room deodorizer. And this was picked up from the very first estate sale I ever went to. Uh, nah, probably not in my life, but definitely while I've been trying to re-thrift or thrifting for reselling. So yes, yeah, so it was Al Cap's Shmoo. This little plug in the back opens up and this still had the little fabric thing that you used as the deodorizer you know pretty vintage condition you know a lot of wear on the face but these are not particularly common and the ones that sell were selling you know fairly for fairly fairly well so i was able to get 29 bucks for him uh, i think he was able he might have he might have been over a pound so i, I might have paid a little bit for postage but i had two dollars in him so i was pretty pretty happy for that uh, I have a whole collection of Metlock's Poppy Trail Homestead uh, China that the first purchase I got was actually this set of grand mugs, which are these three finger, four finger handled mugs. She had picked, picked these up and this is just an example for the resellers out there to make sure you're communicating with your customers because she purchased that. Well, I had a whole bunch of other stuff already listed and I had a few pieces I had not listed yet. And she came and I said, hey, would you be interested in anything more? Because once again, the prices that I've listed include free shipping. If you wanted to combine things, I could give you a discount. And she came back to me and she said, well, do you have any of the, basically the lug handled bowls? And I did. And they were already listed, but she had not found them. Now, I did not go through that and to ask, well, why did she not find them? But regardless, she hadn't found them. So I did have three of them available. I gave her a uh, good deal on them because I was able to save the save the shipping. So I had them listed for thirty dollars. Gave her a coupon to get those at a discount. Combine the shipping, uh, combine them into one box, and she actually just gave me one of my most recent five star reviews, saying that everything was packaged beautifully and that they arrived in uh, one piece, which was great because I was very concerned about these handles. They are uh, these mugs are fairly large and the handles uh, looked like they were just waiting to snap off. So she got them and uh, I was pretty happy with that because the sale of these two mugs and the sale of those three bowls recouped my cost for the purchase of all of the pieces that I had purchased in the set. And I still have several dinner plates, salad plates, some serving pieces left to go. So I'll definitely, I, I didn't lose any money on that investment, which made me a little bit worried. Uh, one of my favorite purchases, this Basset Hound Planter. I uh, picked him up along with a matching salt and pepper shaker, 
the bat the planter is the only thing that sold but it sold for 29 bucks and i had i think 350 into him uh, so i was happy to get that my first decanter sold uh, it was a jim beam decanter this one was a california redwoods uh, decanter and uh, had to sell it for a pretty decent price because it was going to be heavy to ship and it was from 1967 had the california redwoods on it i was full disclosure in taking the stupid picture i snapped the cork off uh in the top of the bottle so the the it does f sit but it, you can go into it i actually just got the cork was split in half so i was very honest about the fact that you could still display it but it wasn't it wasn't something that it didn't fit properly but still sold i got a, a nice a nice 20 bucks out of it so after shipping you know probably still end up like 12 or 13 bucks but i only had two dollars into it so i was pretty happy to get this one I just think is funny because when I do my draft versions of my posts, I'll usually just put a one word title in. And this one I forgot to change the title, but didn't stop it from selling. It was a nice little collection of a community a silver plate spoons, uh, a little box set, uh, South Seas uh, community. Nothing special except that they still had their box and uh, they were super easy to ship, inexpensive to ship. I had only sold them for 12 bucks. Uh, which did include shipping, but I had 25 cents into them. So it came from a yard sale. So I sold them for not very much money because there weren't a lot of comps and I just can't, couldn't imagine they'd be super popular or easy to sell. So 12 bucks, happy enough. Uh, my first hull planter was a mother and child. Uh, that one was one of the first things I had listed and it did take a little bit longer to sell, uh, but I only listed her for 20 bucks. Shipping wise, I think it probably cost me seven or eight bucks a shipper. I had a dollar into her, so I was again fairly content in what I was going to make out of her. But I wasn't convinced that these sold particularly well based on the comps, so I was a little bit leery. So I did price it a little bit lower. So it took not a long time, but it it wasn't a huge mover. So it's just an example of if you want things to move, you just got to make sure you're paying attention to the comps and maybe price them on the lower end. So that if somebody stumbles across you, it makes it a little bit easier to uh, convince them to buy. Another set of, of China uh, dinnerware that I had picked up as a full set was the Pebble Beach by Fran uh, by Franciscan China. I'll be honest, I'm not sure why I bought it because the pattern it screams every bit of the 70s. And but what I share, why I went ahead and highlighted it here, it is the first and only sale that I've had so far that was voluntarily two items purchased in the same order. Now, I neither one of them sold for that much, so I did not go back to them and try and give them any sort of refund. So this was $31 for the two because the shipping, neither particularly the salt and pepper shakers, weren't particularly heavy. These all went probably in the same size box I would have used I just shipped the sugar and the creamer. So technically there might have been a case where I could have given a little bit of a refund or had they contacted me, I would have given them a little bit of a discount. But for this amount, it would have been marginal anyway. So I, I didn't go out of my way um, to refund. So, But this was, the again, the only case that I've ever sold with uh, two items within one order. Uh, the Lefton cat figurine, I picked up Lefton and almost entirely because I became so obsessed with Jeffrey at Real Nifty Vintage, and he talks about Lefton all the time, that I really became aware of Lefton, and I started kind of stockpiling a collection of it. Uh, this might be the first item I've actually ever sold of it, and I'm definitely selling it on the low end of the range. The cat itself cost me a buck. So 16, what you want with the shipping, didn't make a huge amount of money with it, but it took a while to, to, to sell. This was one of the first items I listed and it did take me a while for it to sell. So I'm not sure what the market is right now for figurines or, or for left in in general, but it is something I am attracted to. And I do thank Jeffrey for the, doing these types of educational videos, it's kind of why I wanted to also start doing them to just share some examples, share some things that are happening out there, whether for resellers or for, for buyers to understand, you know, the markets do change and some people, you can't please everybody. 
but I enjoy I enjoy Lefton personally, so I don't have any problem picking them up. It's just uh, for the number of pieces I have, it doesn't seem to sell you know for huge money or particularly well. A weird piece that I picked up fairly early on. It was almost I was concerned it would be too contemporary, but it fell just under the wire. I want to say it was dated 1998, uh, so I could put it into Etsy. It's a very odd, and I never did figure out if there was a reason this exists. I, I don't think it's from a movie or any sort of. It's just a. It's a porcelain figurine of a sheep kind of wrapped up in yarn or made out of yarn i really don't even why i called it a yarn sheep but i don't understand the idea so it, it was marked moskowitz but when i did some searches that, that didn't seem to do anything so i'm not really sure if this came from something again it didn't sell particularly quickly but i priced it at, in a way that if somebody stumbled across it because they like sheep because they like colorful they're they they knit i don't know i put it at 19 bucks which included shipping Again, I only had a couple bucks into it, so I made a decent amount of money, uh, but that ended up being a weird anomaly to what got posted onto my... It's probably a little bit more cartoony than a lot of what I have on my site. Not ashamed by that, but it's also a kind of which one of these is not like the other. Um, the little weird colorful yarn sheep. Lesson uh, of the week came from this set of holiday mugs. So this is video is coming out just this it's basically coming out of the weekend of black friday and etsy was running a promotion that you could opt into so I, it's not like they forced us to do it but they did offer the option to promote a black friday week or black i don't know whatever it basically do a sale for the week of, of thanksgiving and black friday to offer discounts on your store what I did not take, admittedly, it's my fault, what I had not taken into consideration when I offered a 20% discount is that the 20% was also because all of my shipments or listings include shipping, it was taking 20% off the shipping cost as well. So this ended up being a weird situation where the set of mugs is only 20 bucks. I gave a 20% discount, so they sold for $16, which included shipping. And the customer who purchased this lived in Alaska. If I had shipped this via the traditional uh, shipping options through first class mail or whatever, through the U.S. Postal Service, whether parcel ground or even through discounts for, for pirate ship uh, with priority mail, I literally would have lost money. I would have actually paid more in freight than what the customer paid to buy them from me. The only way I'm making, the only reason I'm making any money with these at all is I paid almost nothing for the mugs and I was able to get a discounted rate on a flat rate box. So the first time I've ever used a flat rate box and because of that I squeaked a few buck profit out of this. When I started doing all of these shipments, a bunch of them came in at the same time because of the sale. When I finally sat down and did the calculation, I ended the sale that day. So I ended it two or three days early. Because I just I just realized, and there was one other one that also, because it was being shipped to California, this this pottery or no, it was the, I can't remember which one it was. One of them was being shipped to California, and again the cost of the freight because I took a twenty percent hit on the value, I would have only made I would have made a decent amount, but because it was shipping so far, it was starting to eat into my profits, and that twenty percent killed more of my profits. So you can say I overpaid initially, or I underpriced it. I don't know, but I turned off the sale. So I need to really start paying attention to particularly the oversized items. It may have been this one because this ended up being in a fairly large box because I wanted to try and protect it and it was being shipped a fairly large distance. And it, I sold it for 25. I, I, I made money on everything. There was nothing that I lost money on, but it came really close on the holiday mugs. So the mugs themselves I thought were a really fun purchase when I got them because they were still in their original packaging. and But I again, the idea of selling them for more than 20 bucks, I just didn't think people would do it. So, and they didn't. They paid 16 <laughs> So lesson learned. Uh, coronation plate, had, uh, that's really the only thing I had in my in my uh, shop that has any, anything to do with royalty or anything like that. But it was one of those cases I picked it up in a Goodwill, I think for 50 cents or a dollar. 
and it just was really nice condition it was dated it had the you know it's from the 50s and I, I like to try and have older stuff in there in my booth or in my shop where i can so i picked it up and this was also sold as part of the sale but this one luckily it was light enough i think i was able to send it first class mail and uh even with 20% discount, so I sold it for 12 bucks and I didn't have that much into it. I still made a, made a few bucks. Um, California Pottery, because of how far I shipped it, I made money but didn't make as much as I would have liked to. That was actually marked Los Angeles, Los Angeles Potteries, which is the only piece I've ever had from that. But it's an egg plate, and it, as most people say, those don't sell particularly well. The Demitas Cup and Saucer, this was a lesson in keeping track of what you're doing because the order for this came in at the same time as the order for the mugs, and I actually entered the order for this to go to this address, or no, vice versa. So I actually had to cancel an order midstream, and I'm still trying to figure out the paperwork on that. Um, gotta pay attention. So when you have multiple boxes, you can't just mark the mugs because you'll get confused. I can now say that firsthand. But this was a set uh, that I'd picked up, kind of a quirky, um, design that again I was almost afraid they were too new for Etsy because they looked but I think it turned out they were from the 90s uh, which I'd say pretty much that's what it looks like but it's supposed to be a set of six I only had five of them very distinct look but they were KPM porcelain so they're fairly high quality uh, but they did not sell uh, particularly quickly those were also one of the earlier items I had listed Again, one of my favorite items that I had, this be, this was actually a featured item that I had had on my banner for my page since the day I posted him, was this absolutely adorable bulldog planter. He was from Penco in Massachusetts, which I made in Japan, but from a company in Massachusetts, and I struggled to find any comps. I never found one of him. I never even found one of another dog planter by that company. So Penco did not seem to have a lot of things that I could use for comparison. So this was one of those cases where I just basically looked at other dog items and uh, ended up listing him as for 45, but he was still included as part of that 20% off sale. So I sold him for 36. Um, fairly large box, um, but I didn't have to ship him particularly far. So I was actually, I made a decent amount of money in that because I had $5 into him. So I was really happy to be able to turn him around uh, again and listed it for 45, sold it for 36, including shipping. Those were all the shipments that went out before I turned off the sale. My last item is the uh, Joseph Originals. It's a Christmas angel. And this was something I picked up at a, a private thrift store on one of my business trips. I didn't know what it was when I first saw it and it confused me and thought it was kind of fun. You can see in the bottom when you when you flip it around underneath her skirt there's this metal clip which turns out that's supposed to hold a light bulb and although my finger is kind of confusing and I didn't realize that but this little notch in the bottom this is supposed to sit on a table and then you would have a cord running through the bottom of her skirt and clipping to her so that her skirt would light up. So I basically, I don't remember what lamp I found, but I just held her up against a lamp to show that her skirt would iridesce or be translucent and then there were three jeweled um, colored, colored glass in her skirt. It is a Christmas pattern. She's got a little uh, little uh, holly leaf muff. She is an angel. There were some other examples of her that were selling fairly nicely. I paid three dollars for her. Ended up paying her for paying thirty dollar or uh, selling her for thirty, including shipping. Uh, but she's not particularly heavy, um, so some really nice profit on that. The last thing I'll just say before I wrap up is for the bulldog planter. This technically sold on November 29th. For those who have been watching our videos or follow any of my social media, know that starting today, December 1st, I'm running a uh, fundraiser for a Dachshund rescue group called Just One More Dachshund Rescue, J-O-M-D-R.org. Uh, technically, it was supposed to start today, but I started doing some promotions uh, I think Friday or Saturday, saying I was getting ready for it. And the woman who runs JOMDR promoted that post and started saying, hey, check out the site. 
I do not know if the person who bought the bulldog was a result of any of that promotion. I felt bad about that because I technically the sale didn't start until the first, but I've I've decided that this bulldog purchase will be the first item that goes toward the purchase or goes towards the revenue uh, for the fundraiser. So it sold for thirty six dollars. So ten percent of that three dollars and sixty cents because I'm including the shipping charges as part of the ten percent will be donated to JOMDR. So throughout the month of December, if you are a dog person or you know I need to get any gifts for people who are dog people, go to the site. Anything you can find on the site that's either of a dog, is a dog, has a dog in it, on it, anything, photographs, anything that you can find a dog somewhere on the image, that will be included, that 10% of the sale price will be donated to JOMDR.org. So uh, again, find me on Etsy at TH Mercantile. It's Trusty Huckster Mercantile. TH Mercantile on Etsy as well as Facebook and Instagram. And uh, again, any purchase, I will I will make my own decisions, but you can give me a note if you say you're doing it because of JOMDR, if you say how you found it. I definitely want to let the organization know as people are supporting them through me. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, give a donation, but of course I also appreciate the business that you'll be bringing to me as well. So it's a great time of year to do this, buy a gift, and also give to a great cause as well. So this is a little bit shorter by a little bit than uh, my other videos, but uh, it covered quite a bit. So I don't know what I'll do going forward. If you have any suggestions, I could do them weekly. At this point, I'm not quite to the point of having a sale a day, so that I just don't know if I'd have enough to fulfill a, a, fulfill a week. Or maybe these are boring and no one wants them. So we shall see. Um, once I start filling the rest of my haul videos, I may not be selling anything you don't already know about, so there may be no point, but we shall see. Hope you enjoy this one. If you're still here, thank you very much for uh, listening to this and watching the screen captures. Uh, since you don't actually get to see me, but uh, appreciate it. If you want to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and check me out on all my social media, I really appreciate it, and I uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you so much.